and gentlemen and members of the cabinet will fan out over 20 states across the country to visit communities benefiting from investing in America agenda. This includes places that are seeing new and expanded manufacturing facilities and creating new jobs thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act and Chips and Science Act, groundbreaking groundbreakings of new infrastructure projects funded by the bipartisan infrastructure law and small businesses that stayed afloat or started because of help from the American Rescue Plan. They'll highlight not only the impact of President, President's economic agenda in these communities, but also what's at stake if MAGA Republicans in Congress get their way and repeal the Inflation Reduction Act, hike high, high taxes on hardworking families, and slash funding for manufacturing innovation and research. As the President likes to say, budgets are a statement of values. That's why his budget cuts taxes for working people and families with children by almost $800 billion. And it pays for that by asking the super wealthy and large corporations to pay their fair share, all while not raising taxes at all for anyone making less than $400,000 uh, $400, per year. Tax proposals for MAGA House Republicans look very different. They want to add over $3 trillion to the debt with giveaways skewed to the wealthy and large corporations. And even with, with those huge tax cuts, they're also advancing proposals that would raise taxes for middle-class families, hardworking Americans, and seniors. Now they've, they've even suggested they won't release a, a budget so they can hide how much of their deep and harmful program cuts are just paying for their tax cuts. That's irresponsible and not supported at all by the American people. And while Republicans in Congress are pushing for tax breaks for ultra-wealthy and large corporations, they're also introducing measures to deny, their, their deny millions of their own middle-class constituents from getting the student debt relief they need and deserve. We're talking about more than 2.1 million borrowers who have applied for student debt relief in Texas, more than 380,000 borrowers in Louisiana, more than 250,000 borrowers in Iowa. These are hardworking borrowers who, for the most part, make less than $75,000 a year. They're asking for a little extra breathing room as they prepare for loan payments to restart. And how are their Republicans elected officials responding? They're bent, they're bent on denying middle class families the relief they need, while at the same time slashing Pell Grants to provide a $3 trillion tax giveaway to the ultra wealthy and corporations. These are the same Republican officials who voted to forgive hundreds of thousands of dollars in PPP loans for businesses. Some even had their own loans forgiven, as you've heard the President speak to many times. So I want to be very clear here. President Biden will continue to fight for the middle, middle class families as he has been this past two years in his presidency. The President has also made clear he will veto H.R. 1, another bill that House Republicans have put forward to drive energy costs up for middle class families, pad the pockets of big oil companies, and endanger the health and safety of all Americans. H.R. 1 would double the cost of energy efficiency upgrades that families need to reduce household bills. It would repeal key provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act to cut energy costs and boost economic development. It would eliminate pollution control requirements that prohibit big companies from polluting the air we breathe. And it will allow petroleum refineries that use hydrofluoric acid, a highly toxic chemical known to cause severe burns, eye damage, declassification of bones, to avoid any requirements to consider safer, safer alternative. It is no wonder the bill was endorsed by big oil companies. And with that, Amr, thank you for your patience. Of course. Um, on, um, on Nashville, um, you pointed to last year's bipartisan um, reforms, um, as well as alluded to the executive actions, I think, of just a few weeks ago. Um, it's, and then you also point it's not a panacea, but is there any disappointment um, from the administration that these efforts haven't had more of an effect on lessening the scourge of terrible violence? Well, I don't have the data uh, in front of me on what the president's uh, executive action has been able to do. Clearly, those are ex actions that are uh, that he was able to do on, on the federal level. 
Uh, but the president has been very clear. We need to take in, we need to take more action. We actually uh, need to ban assault 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 weapons. Uh, we need to take more action so that our children are safe in schools, so that our communities are not torn apart. And we've been very clear about that. The president is going to continue to be consistent. Uh, he mentioned that at the State of the Union when he had an opportunity to just not speak in front of Congress, but also speak in front of the American people. We have to do more. The president has t has done almost as much as he can from the federal level to show how important this is to him. Uh, and this is something that he has been working on since he was senator, right? 30 years ago, uh, when the first assault ban weapons uh, passed, it was because of the work, uh, partially, of, the, of then Senator Biden. So again, he's going to continue to call on Congress to act. This is, uh, this is, you know, we can't keep seeing what we saw today. Right now, we're, we're hearing six kids, six elementary kids, dead. Three kids and three adults. And. And so this cannot be happening. Our administrators, our educators cannot be, their lives can't be put on, on the line here when they're going to teach our kids. And the president's gonna to continue to speak out and Congress needs to act. If I could just ask about, um, in Israel, before you got out here, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced his decision uh, to delay action on the judicial overhaul until after, or until the next parliament session. Um, one, just generally, do you have any reaction? And two, does delaying meet the administration's concerns, um, consensus, uh, calls for consensus and compromise? As you just mentioned, Amr, right before I came out, uh, we heard from the Prime Minister of Israel. We, I do have a couple of things to say about his remarks. So we welcome uh, this announcement as an opportunity to create additional time and space for compromise. Uh, compromise is precisely what we have been calling for. And we continue to strongly urge Israeli leaders to find a compromise as soon as possible. We believe that it is the best path forward for Israel, Israel and all of its citizens to find this compromise. Democratic societies are strengthened by checks and balances and fundamental changes to a democratic system should be pursued with the broadest possible base of popular support. And so that's what we're going to continue to call for. Uh, will we see the president address this latest school shooting in Nashville? So I believe he will will be addressing it uh, before he um, before he before he his remarks well, at his remarks today at about two thirty. So you'll hear directly from the president. So the answer there is yes. Okay, and uh, I mean, you, you spoke about the the call from you know the president of the White House for Congress to act on gun violence, but here we are another elementary school shooting. What do you say to, what does the White House say to um, American people who are feeling hopeless right now that this, and in shock that this is happening once again? We say that, yes, we agree. This is unacceptable. What we're seeing today, what we're seeing in schools and communities across this country is unacceptable. Our children should be able to go to school feeling safe, feeling protected. People should be able to go to grocery stores feeling safe. And what we saw today is devastating, is heartbreaking for any American, any parent across the country or any American. And so that's why this president has been very clear from day one, he is going to continue to fight for those communities. That's why he did the, a historic amount of executive orders. From here, from this White House, he was able to sign executive orders uh, that, was, that hopefully will make some difference at the federal level but clearly there is more work to do and Congress, and this is legislative work that Congress needs to act on. So yes, you're gonna to continue to hear from this president. He's going to be very, speak very, about this very loud and clear. And of course he was, he was proud to sign uh, the legislation, uh, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, just in the last, uh, as we saw last year, uh, in the last Congress. And that was something we hadn't seen in 30 years. And we believe a lot of that is because of this work that this president has done. And he has done this not just the last two years, but over his career. So we need to see more. And it is devastating. Of course, our hearts go out to families across the country that have lost loved ones. But the president, again, is going to call on Congress to act. That doesn't change. Again, on the okay. storms, can you just walk us through quickly the, what the weekend was like for President Biden when he got the alerts and when he was updated? Yes, I do have, I can call, I can walk through some of that with you all. So, the, so we're continuing uh, to closely coordinate. 
uh, with our state and federal partners uh, in response to the deadly storm that hit uh, Mississippi. On Saturday, the president held uh, separate calls with Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, along with Senators uh, Roger Wicker and Cindy Hyde-Smith and Congressman uh, Benny Thomas Thompson pardon me, on Missis of Mississippi to express his condolences for the lives lost and damage resulting from the tornadoes and extreme weather that impacted Mississippi overnight. On Sunday, President Biden approved a disaster declaration for Mississippi and ordered federal aid to supplement state, tribal, and local recovery efforts in the areas affected by the severe uh, storms and the president's uh, because of his actions the federal funding uh, that uh, available uh, to those inf infected inv individual will go to counties like Carroll, Humphreys, Monroe and Sharkey and also on Sunday as I mentioned at the top we saw FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell and DH DHS uh, Secretary Mayorkas travel to Mississippi to survey the damage and meet with federal state and local uh, officials and so the president again will continue to be uh, to be updated uh, as uh, over the next couple of days, and uh, and so this is something that we are taking very seriously. Is it at all? Is it I don't all have now? I don't have a, I don't have any trip. Uh, we don't have a trip to, to preview at this time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, great. Um, does the White House have any additional executive orders in the pipeline on guns, given the realities of the the <coughs> lack of support for these things in Congress? So don't have any uh, anything to preview at this time on any additional executive orders. As you know, earlier this month, while we were out west, uh, uh, I think you may have traveled with us. I can't remember. Felt, felt like it felt like ages ago at this point. Um, we were the president was able to announce uh, an additional executive order, but we've taken a historic actions. You know this, I, Jeff. I know you've covered this uh, the first year and a half more than any other uh, president has, and so clearly we have taken this seriously. Uh, but again, we need legislative action, and that has to come from Congress. One other topic: um, Are U.S. regulators and, and is the administration looking at expanding? emergency lending to help give First for public bank. more time to shore up its balance. So um, I don't have uh, don't have anything new to to uh, to share for here. As you know, that's something the federal regulators uh, and the Treasury Department. Uh,
you know, that's something that they would be focusing on. What I will say more broadly about um, about regional banks and, uh, and the actions uh, that could potentially be taken, as Chair Powell recently said, our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital li liquidity. But when we take in decisive and forceful actions to strengthen the public confidence, you've heard me say that many times. From here, that was something that. was important for the president to do. And also give access, uh, give bank access to resources to meet uh, those depositors' demand. Uh, and so, look, we took actions. Uh, the deposit stabilized at regional uh, regional banks. That's what we have seen over the past ten days or so. And but I just don't have anything to share beyond that as it relates to regional banks or First Republic. But again, the actions that we have taken uh, has certainly. Uh, We have seen some work, uh, and we want to continue to, to give Americans confidence, uh, but also make sure that depositors uh, get the, get what they need as well, the resources that they need. Okay. Just following up on the idea of hopelessness, which I think all parents feel in a pretty visceral manner on days like today, does the President believe that there is an actual legislative solution to this, or a, a solution that the government can bring, given kind of culturally where the U.S. is on uh, this issue of political divides, all of these things put together? Is there an actual well, the president, uh, as you've heard him say many times before, he's an optimist and he's a fighter. Uh, and you have seen that from this president over the last two years. Uh, and he's an optimist and rightfully so. We saw, you saw him sign uh, a bipartisan uh, piece of legislation that we hadn't seen on gun violence to deal with gun violence in 30 years. That's because of this leadership of this president uh, and the work that he's put in. So we have to be optimistic and we have to fight at the same time. But at, But we also have to call what is unacceptable. And what we continue to see in these communities is unacceptable. And, you know, I know, Phil, you're, you're a dad.